Hi, everybody, and welcome back to our blog from the Kama Sutra to 2020, where we talk about your questions, your concerns, even your worries around all things to do with sex and sexuality. So as always, we have with us today, Dr. Anvita Madan Behel. Anvita is a psychosexual therapist and she brings the uh, clinical and psychological perspective to the advice that the Kama Sutra has to give. Welcome, Anvita. Thank you, Seema, and welcome everyone to our blog this week. So for our viewers at home who may not really know what we're talking about when we mention the word sexual nostalgia, sexual nostalgia is literally the term used for memories of intimacy, memories of a sexual relationship, which you take forward into your life. So either if the relationship, that previous one is finished and you've moved on to another one, or if you're single now or whatever, um, it's just that memories of the intimacy that you carry forward. And the thing is that these memories of your intimacy actually impact you hugely. I mean, they're very powerful memories. Because if your relationship was very good, then that's what you take forward. If it was traumatic, then that's what you take forward. And that will impact all your future relationships. And interestingly, as one of the people who'd written in to us had said, this is the one thing that nobody ever deals with after a relationship is broken. So you go to a therapist, you go to a counselor, they will talk about everything that impacts your finances, to impacts your security, to everything else. But we never ever discuss the idea of sexual nostalgia because, Anvita, as we know, this is always the taboo subject, isn't it? And I think what happens is that what we underestimate is that there are other relationships that can compensate uh, for losing a relationship. You can find, you know, a, a solution to loneliness or talking to someone or going out for a movie with someone or a party. But what you can't replace is a romantic sexual relationship. Uh, and we really underestimate the value of it because once again, sex, you know, we are not supposed to allow, need sex have fun with sex, have pleasure with sex. So why would we miss sex, right? So that is something that is very easily overlooked. But like you said, it really does trouble people. It really does. And you know, interestingly, um, we've also had a lot of people saying, we don't understand. Why have you called the blog from the Kama Sutra to 2020? And I keep explaining to people, well, it's all about how the same things carry forward. You know, relationships, desires, arousal, um, wants, etc. None of that has changed. It never will because we're all human beings. And interestingly, the Kama Sutra says that memory is the most powerful aspect of any intimate relationship, of any kind of intimacy. As a matter of fact, Kamdev, the god of love and desire, another name for him is Smara, memory. Because memory of things that have gone on before um, this moment can either bring you huge joy or complete trauma. And most of the time, it's, um, it's associated with pain and trauma, strangely enough. So let's actually start with, I have a few questions over here from uh, people, they're, they're fairly similar, but with a little bit of a difference. Let's actually begin with this idea of um, the, the sexual nostalgia leading to a great deal of obsession and trauma. The, the first person who wrote in to me said that it's the one thing that's never been addressed after her last breakup. And she's actually find, uh, finds that she's become obsessed with the idea of her past relationship, with this sexual nostalgia. And she's now not being able to get past it. So obviously, you know, it's scary when we hear the word obsessed and, you know, what that looks like. But what I would, and so I, I don't know how she's defining it, but I think we need to remember that good memories, like you said about the good memories with Kam and you know, Devta and everything, those are our pool of fantasies. You know, we, when we want to feel aroused, we go to those memories, those days when we had an amazing sexual experience and we go back to them and we say, oh, this is definitely going to give me arousal because I have such an amazing 
you know, night, day, sexual experience that day. Uh, so in some ways, if you are somebody who is connected to your sexuality and are secure about your sexuality, there don't feel bad that you're accessing those memories. It just means that those were pleasurable moments. They were, you know, beautiful moments that you went to. So One in this case, sorry, yeah. sorry, carry on. No, ask what you were saying. I just wanted to say that if, you know, it's, it's not a bad thing if you're connecting to the fantasy. Brilliant. Um, I was actually going to say that in, in this case, for instance, um, she's single and she feels that she's actually obsessing over this idea of um, sexual nostalgia. Is there something that you can advise her with to, uh, to, to be able to use this, um, these memories in a more positive way? Because I know that we've often said that, you know, even sort of pleasuring yourself to a past memory or to something is good. So is there something that you would recommend? So I think that, you know, she needs to separate the relationship from a sexual memory because a sep you know in some ways a sexual memory is kind of like a trigger it is um, it is something that is a trigger that gives us arousal it doesn't what we complicate it sometimes with everything right or wrong that happened in the relationship and then we feel guilty that you know that person was horrible but we are still feeling aroused by their memory and how can we be like this and is there something wrong with me or I have no self-esteem and all those things complicate the matter when you look at it as your sexual desire whatever that partner sexually did to you or you had in that relationship gave you arousal so if you stick to that don't attach it to all the relationship issues that happened there I think then you will feel better about it rather than feeling like guilty about it in many ways and i guess it's okay to i mean i know that you said obsession is a scary word and maybe she doesn't know how to deal with it and maybe that's why she's using the word obsession but basically you're saying that it's also okay to have that pot of memories to dip into till you find another form of stabilizing that particular aspect of your life so i think that all of us have you know, memories, or we rely on moments of feeling good or proud within our lifetime, right? And when we are going through a difficult time, we dip into those moments and say, oh, you know, if I'm thinking the worst of myself, I have that spot, you know, I remember, like if I'm thinking, oh, I'm obsessing about this sexually, or I'm bad sexually or something, I can dip into saying, no, actually, I had a great sexual relationship, there was everything fine with me. So sometimes, you know, we just dip into those points, it, it becomes a toolkit to access. We need a pot, a well of resources that we can dip into, to help us cope with new crises or new you know, difficulties. And that's where we need to go. So don't feel guilty that you have those. Those are yours. They're not connected to other people or other relationship. Those are your positive moments. You know, I actually uh, refer to this as a life hack. I always say that you've got to have this pot of memories that you can daydream from or even if it's not memories, even if it's things that have, haven't happened. But to me, that whole idea of using a pot of memories to, uh, to daydream with is just the best thing that you can do to yourself. Yeah. And, you know, and it doesn't, um, it, it, nobody has control over them because they're yours. You know, they're your dreams or your memories and polluting them with what if, how and all and actually that complicates the matter keep it simple it's your memory they're beautiful memories you know you remember people and relationships through beautiful memories uh, and sometimes it doesn't help to remember the negative ones so just stick to that which brings me very cleverly to the next point there's a bunch of people who've also written in saying that their sexual nostalgia, even though the word nostalgia generally is associated with beautiful, positive memories, um, but their sexual experiences in the past relationship were so bad that it's now impacting the next relationship because they find that they cannot actually go back into the sexual act because their memories of their previous one were so bad. 
what would you give in the way of advice for that? Yeah. So one of the things that I'm going to start with, because I know we're going to do a video around abuse and sexuality coming very soon. I am going to address this question based on that they were bad sexual experiences and something went amiss sexually and that they were not abusive. We're going to do a separate video yeah. on that. So if you have a negative sexual experience, be very careful about that because what we have seen happens is that it has an impact on us. And then the second time that we're getting involved in the relationship, the fear of things going wrong, the fear that you're going to repeat that experience is so high that we start like obsessing about, oh, will I be able to do it? Will I, won't I be able to do it? Will I have arousal? Will I get an erection? Would I be able to penetrate? Like all those things really trouble our mind. But what happens in that moment is what we call spectatoring. We are looking upon the, you know, the sexual experience rather than being present in it. We're not present, we're not connected. If you're not connected, sexual arousal chemistry will not happen. And in some ways you're giving birth to another bad sexual experience. And as you can see, we've started the vicious circle. And what was, you know, just one of those crazy odd days that things didn't work out now becomes your firm belief that you know, I'm bad at sex or I don't have arousal or I can't get an erection. So it becomes your firm belief. So be, be very careful, seek help, talk about it, even if it's with friends. Don't let one experience define, um, you know, your sexuality in some ways. I think that's absolutely the best advice that I have heard in a very long time. We talk about this in everything else. We say mindfulness, you know, that's the buzzword these days, isn't it? In the world of psychology, in the world of everyday life, be mindful, mindful breathing, mindful cooking, mindful everything. But <laughs> darned if anybody would ever use it for mindful sex. And yet it's so simple that, you know, we have had really you know, people have generally had bad experiences in sex at some point in their life or, or other. But for some people, their entire relationship might have been a really bad sexual experience for a number of different reasons. It could be that the partner was not good, that there was not enough arousal, there wasn't enough attraction, whatever the reason might be. When we go into the next relationship, we bring all that baggage with us. And like you said, we're actually standing back and watching ourselves. And I think that for everybody out there listening, I really want you to take this point on board because you know what, changing the way that you think, we might say, people might come to you and say, you know, you must learn to deal with it, must learn to put that out of your mind. You must learn to forget about it. this is a new day. This is a new life. It's not easy to change the mind. It's not easy to change the way that you think and things that have, you know, ideas and conceptions that have sunk into your brain, you can't shift them. It's not easy to shift them. So the only way to do uh, to work around this is to actually deal with it, to understand how to actually, uh, how to actually bypass this, this preconception rather than trying to shift it or move it out of your head altogether. And as Anvita says, just for that time being, almost treat it like a form of meditation. Become present say okay never mind what things were in the past they were all bad anyway but how about i actually just be part of what i'm doing almost like you're meditating and if it helps and with that do you think maybe they should try and do some meditation just before so we highly recommend mindfulness actually so you mentioned so mindfulness has become a really important element uh, within psychosexual work uh, because it is really like you said about being in the present you know this is a new relationship it's a new connection what didn't work in the past it's, this is a new partner. It's not true that it'll happen again here. But the more you're in the present, the more you're connecting with your partner, things will flow automatically. You will feel aroused, there will be a flow, you will create a connection. That connection so many times gets broken because then we start worrying. The fears and anxiety take over 
and the connection gets broken. And the best way to keep fears and anxiety at bay is, like you said, to be in the some food, mindful, present, meditative space with your partner. And, and actually, a positive experience can go a long way in breaking the cycle. So if you can really practice being in the moment and you can start by saying for the, you know, first for a minute, I will be present, then for two minutes, then the five minutes, the same way we do with meditation. We meditate for one, 10, and then we are able to meditate for an hour, right? So the same strategy goes here as well. I think that's just absolutely brilliant advice. I think that what we are saying between us is that one is we never ever talk about sexual nostalgia. It's a very real thing. And you would be amazed at how much it impacts your mind and how much it drives forward your future relationships and almost every other aspect of your life is impacted by that. So first of all, become aware of your sexual memories just actually start to become aware of how you think of it, what they mean to you and how they actually define your behavior in certain aspects of your life. So first thing, become aware. Secondly, if you feel that your relationship has broken up and you are obsessing over this one aspect of your life, we totally understand you're missing it, you're thinking about it, you're thinking about all the good times that you had. But more importantly, there was just that, that closeness, that intimacy is not just about sex, it's also about the, the desire, the arousal, the, the good feeling it gives you, and the fact that you had physical closeness with somebody. Don't look at it as an obsession. Work through it. Actually allow that to come into your mind let it be part of your positive memories and gradually that will then come to a slightly more calming level. Don't try and push it out of your head. Don't feel that it's, um, it, there's something wrong with you when you feel like that. Take it on board, accept it, give it permission to happen and gradually it will find its own balance. And finally, if the smara, the memory, the nostalgia was a negative one, as Anvita says, be present. The only way of removing that fear, because you can't remove the memory, removing the fear is to be present in the moment so that you're actually doing something rather than watching yourself do something which is being impacted with something that happened in the past. Have I left anything out, Anvita? No, I think you covered everything. Brilliant. So as always, like, comment, subscribe on the video. If you have any questions, we're here on info.seema.anand.gmail.com. And if you need any direct clinical advice, please do get in touch with Anvita at anvitamadanbehel.com. And we will see you here next week with another question. See you next week.